going on everybody hit pause here to bring you guys something that I am actually quite proud of I just came up with this right now and um, I'm really really proud of it and I wanted to share how I did it now I've got this tarantula which acts as a tarantula boss now I have a bunch of animations that I've made already for them and they're a little rough if I play you can see you know a little bit of an idol here that loops okay I'm gonna turn off looping so he goes to the idle and then he will um, do it like a full body slam where he goes BAM you know where she does a full body slam does a jump slam so it jumps up and let's, let's get farther away and hit play on that again jumps up and comes back down um, does a lunge forward attack and slams the ground um, stomps one leg. I gotta raise that leg higher. It's not not as scary as it needs to be. But what I've also got is turn right 90 degrees. Now, if you watch the animation here, I've only done one leg. Just keep that in mind that I haven't actually finished this yet, and I stopped because I was like, I gotta share this. Um, you'll watch if you watch the leg. It's just going like that, okay, and then goes into place. But what you'll notice is that the last frame and the first frame are exactly the same. So he's back back to his initial idle pose, right? Okay, so if I scrub to the right and then as fast as I can go to the left, you see it jerk, but it comes back into the exact same spot. And what we get here, now remember, I've got an idle animation, um, idle middle, that is gonna be pretty much the same thing. I gotta fix the butt, but that's about it. That's not that big of a deal. Um, but the idle, he just moves around in place, right? Now, the here's the genius part. If I hit play here, I've got it set to automatically stick him in the idle spot. I don't want to give away too much of what's going on in the game. Um, but here's my my very early map. And if you watch just this one leg, you can see that as as he turns, okay, he's actually get out of here, get out of here. He'll turn and then do the idle. Now it's just the one idle animation. You'll notice that the idle animation plays in the angle that he's at. Okay, so he plays the idle right there. All right, and then turns again. Now that's all I've got in the sequence right now. I have a lot of other uh see this is this is what I was doing. So he plays the um turn right 90 as you can see here and then he plays idle. And it's just loops and that's all it does. And it plays and it plays perfectly. Um and you'll notice that they have rewind on play is set to true, but they also have no reset on rewind set to true, which if you read says when rewinding this interpolation, reset the initial positions of any relate to initial movements to the current location. This allows the next loop of movement to proceed from the current location and rotation. It doesn't say that. I've got a lot of other stuff in this um, Kismet sequence. It tracks the eyes. It picks different attacks. Those, those attacks I showed and does damage to you and is tracking, you know, you have to shoot him in the eyes. And so I've got all that stuff going, but that's, that's not the point. The point is is how did I achieve that animation? Now if you look here, I've, I've actually saved that as a completely separate file and I've gone back to where I was. Now you'll notice first off that I'm at 1400 and fr between 1400 and 1500. And if you look at the animation, it's just the spider turning. Okay. Now the thing is, is when I go to export this, the spider can't turn. Okay, the, the, the turning movement has to be done to the object's root. Now, one of the most important things about this whole entire thing is that my animation root bone, my very root bone, if you look, I'm on view here, so I'm on the world, I've got zero, zero, zero in the world. Okay, if I hit G for the grid, okay, that's dead on the zero point. Okay, that's right there, it's zero, zero, zero. Okay, so all my animations are controlled with this. I can move the whole spider around anywhere I want him to go, doo -doo 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 -doo, but my root bone stays in the exact same spot. So that anytime I play a new animation, 
they're all going to go from the same spot. Now I got to make sure that wh wherever I move them to, my next animation links from there, right? So I have a lot of stuff here. Now if I, you'll notice I also have a copy of the uh, terrain here to try to get foot placement. Now it's kind of impossible to get an exact duplicate into max of the terrain, but in essence basically what you need to do is export the height map. Um, then create a fake bounding box on your landscape actor and then make sure that uh, you when you use a displacement map here that you make sure that the bottom and the top are within that um, fake uh, you, you, you know you create a, a box brush and then you export that as a static mesh and then you pull that into into max and then you line up your 3d studio max um, displaced plane here uh, to to have the same height and bottom and stuff and because you can arbitrarily scale landscapes in UDK and place them in any position there's really no way to tell uh, what your height scale is or how wide it is or anything like that you could try to do measures and stuff like that but good luck with that it's easiest just to create a faux bounding box and export that and bring that in here so it's very close but it's not identical because of the way that terrain and all that stuff works. So that's why, uh, for the most part, what I tried to do was make sure that the arena that you're actually fighting in was relatively flat. Okay? Was as flat, pretty much, it's, it's pretty flat right here. So this is the area where, where you fight them. So how am I going to get this twerp to spin and get the feet to be exactly perfect? That's the key. The feet are exactly perfect. Uh, if I come to Kismet here, do, 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 where is it? So it's right here. Okay, this is my turn in place. Okay, when I scrub this, if you watch, if you watch this foot, it's like exactly, pretty much exactly perfect. It like doesn't go anywhere it doesn't shift around on the ground. Now I'm a little off in terms of the height but what's pretty cool is that I can actually fix the landscape <laughs> instead of fixing the animation you know. I could move the feet down just a little bit but because you'll notice that the landscape isn't like actually a hundred percent flat compared to 3D Studio. I do have a couple of dips and stuff um, but the main thing is that 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 foot ain't going anywhere at the plant point. It's sort of shaking a little bit, but that's not gonna go really noticed, you know? Okay. So that's what I that was my goal was to get that foot to be right right when it comes down, it pretty much plants. Okay. So how did I do it? Alright. First off, I need to swamp my number of frames because I have eight legs and I want them on a 20 cycle uh, 20 would be a uh, hundred frames is actually not gonna work because if if I go every 20 frames let's just say this is on so I'm gonna go on off on off on off okay my my last frame will be off but my first frame is on so it doesn't work so I actually need to go to 1560 okay so 160 frames and I'll just go ahead and move everything to frame 1560 here so the spider is turning in place okay no movement just turns now which bone did I turn in this case because my root is at zero and because in UDK I'm rotating the object okay the object itself which has an anchor point excuse me I got I just drank a whole bunch of soda um, you'll see that I wrote, I'm actually rotating the root bone. Now the most or the second most important thing let me get UDK closed. I'm not going to save anything because I don't, I don't really need to. And now I should be able to right click. Let me reopen the scene because you get this whole Freaking thing, it just pisses me off every time it happens. Now can I right click? No, okay, I'm gonna pause and reopen Max because this drives me absolutely balls out insane when this happens. Okay, we're back in Max and my what the f it was working you know what it, it's not it's not UDK, it's goddamn Camtasia. Oh well, I'll have to eat that. So 
I'm going to grab my root bone and I'm going to right click and scrub this every single time and show you the Z rotations curve. Notice that it is linear, 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 linear. I'm going to click that over and over and over again. Okay, that is linear curve. So there is no acceleration, no deceleration. It's a full blown linear curve. Now, what I want the foot to do is stay here for 20 frames. Okay, where it was. So it's going to stay there. Now you would think, oh well. Uh, now here's the thing, this foot is linked right now to the master control. The master control is this bone right here. This bone is merely linked to the root bone. It in itself, however, is completely the king, the king S of F mountain. Okay, this is the one that controls my whole spider. Okay, everything goes with it. Alright, so everything is linked to that. So this will too, but this is being controlled by the root bone, which in general I'm not ever going to animate. And in this case, I'm not going to animate it either, but I'll show you what I mean. Now, so you would think, okay, well, hmm. So how am I going to get this foot to stay in place, then move to the correct spot, then stay in place and move to the correct spot? So you would think, okay, well, at this frame in view mode here, it's at this particular position, negative 524. 0 0.076. Now I'm just going to go to frame 1420 and paste that in, okay, and then come here. Now this, by the way, just letting you know, this is the wrong way to do it. I just want to show you what you might think that you could do. Okay, so I do that. So now if I look, if I scrub this back really fast, it's pretty much in the exact same place, but it's at the wrong rotation. But look at what's going on in between here. It's all scrubbing all over the place. Now you would think, oh, okay, well, all I got to do is come here and make sure that my keyframes for a position, say X position, which, am I on the right object? X position, Y position here, and Z position, okay. You would say, okay, well, I got to make these linear too. So I don't want to bust my animation before this timeline because I have a very huge time string of animations that are going on here. So in order not to bust my curve on the back end, you can use this one that only does like incoming and outgoing. So I'm going to say outgoing is linear, incoming is linear here. Okay, now that busts the end of it, but I don't care about that yet because I haven't animated that far. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the line position. So outgoing. It's the one with the arrow going to the right is linear and incoming is linear. So I, ha I now have linear here and I'll just do it for uh, Z as well just in case there was some kind of movement but there wasn't. So you think okay well now it's linear it's going to be planted in the same in the right spot. But it's not. It's still shifting around. Now you think, oh, well, you got to get your rotations. Okay. I'll do that. So I want to go by view, and it's at this particular angle at this particular frame. So I'm going to make it at 1420 be at the same angle. But look at this. 4.6871 in view. 4.6871. Now it's the Z is the only angle that changed. Okay. Okay because it didn't tilt and it didn't pitch. It only yawed. Okay, now it's still moving around on the floor. You notice that it's still going around. You think, okay, well, I gotta get my, uh, my rotations to be linear. Fair enough. So what I'm gonna do is actually show all of these and do them all at once. So the outgoing is linear and the incoming is linear. But look, it's still moving around. Okay? It's still not planted clean. This might be good enough for some people. Um, and a lot of people, to be honest with you. But it's kind of a long process, and anyways, I gotta go through and copy and paste a whole bunch of keyframes and stuff like that. 
or, or values, you know, for x, y, and z, and then I don't even get a, a flawless result anyway. As you can see, the foot's all over the place. Okay. So what the hell do I do to fix it? I will show you. Now, the thing is, is I can't, I can't de-link it. Okay, I l actually, let me undo that real quick, because here's the animation here. Now, when I go to export this bad boy, I'm going to wipe this frame out so that it doesn't move. So that I'm doing it now, you can see that the foot, okay, between 1420 and that, you can see that now there's actually movement. Because what I've done is I've countered the rotation with movement, okay? Now, if this doesn't move, then this doesn't move, so it now moves, okay? If that makes any sense. Because, like I said, this is linked to it, so I've, I've countered the linkage. But I still, if, if even even here, I can still see that that foot is shifting around, and it's not good. Now, the reason that this method is not working is because, and my actual animation here of my foot is linear. Okay, I've got two keyframes, and the foot is moving between two frames. Okay, so if I wipe this animation here and you look at the path of the foot it's moving in a perfectly straight line between these two points okay the problem with that is that the path that this one's taking between 1400 and 1420 is not a straight line it is an arc okay that's why this isn't lining up so that's what we gotta figure out okay well how are we gonna counter that and here is Zyn answer very simple very uh, very very simple I'm gonna make a cylinder okay I'm gonna make it one segment and three segments and that I just I just need a very generic cylinder and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align it to my root bone okay and I will rotate it down 90 degrees so that it is basically exactly you can see here zero and zero it doesn't really matter how high it is and what I'll do is I'll just make the height something relatively long and from this point here I'm gonna just so I can know which foot I'm dealing with I'm gonna rotate it right here okay and now what I'm gonna do is you would think okay well I can link this to the root bone I will do as such. Okay, and now you can see that it follows the root bone, the root bone's animation. Okay, now I'll take this circle controller object, and I'll go to my tab here, and I will tell this instead of using the master controller, link it to this cylinder instead. Okay, watch what happens. Now watch what happens if I rotate this. Oh, what the hell? Watch what happens if I move it. Hmm, why in God's name is that happening? Right, what the hell? So, here is what is happening. The problem is, and you'll notice that if I move the root bone around, it, it sure is how linked okay um, if I rotate now well okay well what what's driving that let me delete that link and now look the foot stays there so why when I add the link to this thing does it follow it okay but like I'll move off the frame but not really like it's not really following it. Now the answer to that is what I like to call uh, pretty much a complete frickin mystery. I have no idea why that doesn't work. I do know however that this guy cannot be linked to the root bone but however if I use a link constraint and instead use my master controller which is linked to the root bone okay 
at frame 1400 here. Now, when I come here, wait, this hasn't been linked to it yet. Actually, it has. Okay. Still not working. So that's weird, right? So okay, so let me get rid of that link. And you can see that it the, the leg's following it. The leg is following it. And if I rotate it now, nothing. And it's got no links or anything. So let me make sure it's not linked to anything. And try again to rotate it. And it doesn't work. It's really weird, right? So let me delete that link, and now I'll rotate this, nothing. But you also see that my foot stays in place. Okay? So what I'll do is hard link this to this guy. Okay? I'll re-put back this link here. Okay, and the foot stays. And after the after the frame. it still doesn't work it's and it's not you'll notice that it's not spinning I've linked it here well, why isn't it spinning you know so it's it's there's some weird stuff that happens with this method and I'm pointing out these problems because I ran into them earlier and I was like what that doesn't make any sense it's linked you know, if I go, if I hit H here, you can see that the cylinder one is linked to the master controller. It's the it's the next one from body. Okay, and you can see that the foot is, well, the foot's actually technically not following anything right now. Okay, it's it's linked to the world. But let's make sure auto key is on, and come here. We link this to that. Okay, we'll go to frame 420 and we'll try to rotate it now. Still, we get nothing. Okay. Now, on this guy, we'll link to world and then we will link to the object. And you think, oh, well, that broke. And we come here and we rotate it. Look at the leg now it's working so how about I delete that link or I'll relink to world oh wait I gotta do it here I'll delete the link I'll put it back this we can come off of uh, animating here and I'll just move this back down to the foot and then I will relink it to this master controller. And now I'll come here and try to rotate it. And now my leg works. And it's also following the animation. So it's very kind of weird. If that even makes sense, if very and then kind of can actually be strung together, that would be this. Now the thing is, is that this object is not at zero, zero, which it should be. The thing is, is that this object here actually um, is linked to the root. Now the root's rotating around the zero point of the world. So everything else, no matter what position it might weirdly be in, is going to still orbit around the zero point and that's the important thing so the fact that this might not be at zero zero really doesn't make a difference but if I wanted to I could fix that by saying okay well let me delete that link and now I'll take this and I'll just make sure that it is moved to zero 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 okay and then I can pretty much re-add the link back and after the frame here it should still be able to animate and it does okay so now the trick, what I like to do is this. I go every 20 frames on with my 
little arm bar here selected, okay, it's at zero, zero. I go and I do a keyframe every 20 frames. Okay, that's the, that's the cycle that I want to keep is 20 frames. Okay, so it's in essence not doing anything because if I wipe the animation from my root and you watch here, it doesn't move at all. So it's doing nothing. So then what I do is I say, okay, well what what angle am I actually altering here? Notice that I'm in view. It's very important that you're not in local or parent or any of that. You want to be in view. So I've got 126 there and I'm at 138 here. So it looks like my X, 90 and 0. Let's see, what do I have here? 90 and 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that value there. Now it's going to stay, it's going to move and put itself back into place. But notice that is shifting around between those frames. The, pr the reason for that is because the curve editor, okay? The X rotation here is a linear curve, uh, is not a linear curve, where my, my um, root objects is a linear curve. So if I take this one and I say it's linear coming out, and I take this one and say it's linear going in, now look between the two frames. See that? Perfectly still, 100%, until I get to frame 21 and then it moves. Okay? But before that, it's 100% still. Now the reason that this works and the reason that moving doesn't work is because now, because this is linked to this, I am actually moving this object in an arc movement. Okay? the animation is an arc. Okay, so then all I gotta do, and you'll notice now it moves, okay, so afterwards it moves just like I want, and now what I gotta do is get this position and from the next one lock that one in. Now it's gonna shift around, but that's okay, but then I want it to move and now I want to lock this one again, so I'm gonna copy that X and I'm gonna paste that here boom okay let it move and then whatever angle it's at I want to counter it now the reason that they counter themselves out is because they're both both the root object and this object are rotating from the same point they're rotating from the same point and they're rotating so one being linear I can counter that they're on a linear path okay so all that's 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 the meat of it now all I got to do here is come to the curve editor once I've done all of them show my X rotation come on and I can just get them all and just blast them all to linear and now watch the foot planted moves planted moves planted moves planted moves perfect now here's the thing so planted and then moves to this position. Now, when I get rid of my animation from my root object, this object's still animating. Okay, see that? Boom, 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 boom. And that's it, that's the trick. That's the whole thing. So I'll put that animation back, and then all I gotta do is take this guy and do the same thing. I'll plant keyframes every 20 frames, which I probably should have done at the same time that I was planting them for the uh, for the other for the for the bar. And every time he takes an actual step, see right now the foot's planted. Every time he takes a step. I just got to move this object up. So there he goes. Takes a step. Boom. And now what I can do is copy this to every other one.
and there he goes. Keeps it planted, step up, perfect plant, step up, perfect plant, step up, perfect plant, step up, perfect plant. Perfect plant to exactly where it was in relative to his rotation, which is the exact same pose, just rotated 90 degrees down exactly the zero point of all my other animation start points. Okay? The the loop point for all of my the animations that I'm playing. So all I gotta do for for the others is basically just make a dupe. Okay. Now you'll see that they stay in place. Now that this foot I want to actually offset. Right? So what I'm actually going to do is take everything and just shift it 20 degrees, 20 frames, and then take my last frame and put it to the front. With auto key off, I can still align it back to my foot. And now you'll see that they go in alternating sequences. Okay? And I should technically just be able to delete that and add this. And I might run into that weird ass issue again. Nope, there we go. And that's it. I can get all his feet. And I gotta do the same thing on this guy to do the every 20 frames thing. So in reality, to save myself a little bit of work, I'm just going to hit all of these at the exact same time. So now I can pop keyframes for all of them. So I'm locking them down where they are, basically, at each of these 20 frames. Keeping in mind that your head is supposed to remove the root animation that we're seeing. Right? That root animation is not technically happening. Now, a way for me to actually like visualize that would be I just created a camera. Okay. Now I'm going to link that to the root. And now watch. Wait. Why why did anything even remotely close to that happen? Oh, it's because it's a targeted camera. I don't want a targeted camera. I'm gonna make a free camera here. Am I on snap? Yeah, that's part of the problem. So I'll make a camera here. Flip it around. Change my view to be that camera. And that's not a good view, so let me hit Alt W. This is the camera view. Here's the camera, so I'll go ahead and move that like so. Rotate it down. Okay. And now the camera I want to actually link to the root bone. And now you'll see that the world turns. So this is how we gotta envision it in our heads. Because remember I'm wiping the root bones animation. So we're animating it with the turn to make sure everything's gonna work out, but we are in essence we're not actually going to be doing it that way. I hope I hope I've beaten that point home like a hundred thousand times over now. So now all my legs have the 20 frames? Yes. I didn't stop halfway to make some kind of an idiot remark. So now this one is lifting up on the opposite sequence. So lift up and just dupe that to every other one. Now we can run into issues near the end of the animation.
Okay, but if you see, it landed exactly where I needed it to land. Now this is also completely irregardless I want that actually be local of any movement that I might do to the rest of his body. Okay. So he goes up and down. I can still animate the whole entire rest of his body. And the feet are gonna do their thing. See that? Dunk 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 dunk. And again, perfect plants. hundred percent perfect. Flawless. Look at that. There's no movement whatsoever. I don't even see the, the verts flickering. Now the reason I think that you see it happening in UDK is because of the compression of the animation. That is what I believe is actually the case here. Now what I can do here on this foot, because it's going to be opposite, is simply delete that and add my first link here. Okay, I don't actually need. Now that's assuming that I want a perfect counter countering, you know. And there's nothing saying that in between here I can ha I can't have any one foot take a, a longer step or a shorter step or mess with the timing. This is just all theory. Okay, because it might look a little stupid if he's stomping every other leg, like doom, 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 doom. You know, that's kind of dumb. But I'll be perfectly honest with you, that's actually how the spi spiders move. Each leg is a pair that walks like a human. The two front legs are in exact opposite sequence, walking like a human. As the right foot hits the forward point, the, r the left foot is at the rear. Okay, but it's also the same between each pair of legs in the rear. So in essence, they, they actually do do this. If you look at the, the cycle of a, of, a, of a real spider, and if you look at like, you know, robot spiders and stuff like that, they do it too. I tend to actually uh, end up offsetting it because to me, this looks stupid. Like, I don't like that really. I don't know. I mean, it ain't like it's all that bad. And then this this one, I can just do the same thing. I delete this link and add this one to the second one. Boom. And this one moves in the beginning. So I move it up. And then it plants. And then I move it up. Okay. And now I can just basically dupe that over. And so now one side of it Okay, there he is making his turn on one side. And all I gotta do on these guys is the same thing. Delete this link and add, oh, I wanna undo that. I had the wrong one highlighted. Delete that, no? Oh, well it's because I'm doing it like way up at the other frame delete that link and add this opposite one and now that one does the same thing in opposite union and this one delete link add link bam this one delete link add link bam and my last one, delete link and add link. Bam. I think I got the right ones. There you go. Now you notice those feet are crossing over. I, I can fix that easy enough. 
and and, and what I plan to do is add I, just just for theory's sake. That's why I did it this way, just so you guys can see. Okay, there he is making his turn. And again, my feet when they're planted are are actually traveling in a perfectly arced path, based on his rotation. Okay. So then what I can do is say the front leg and the second leg are the ones that are going to be raising up at the halfway point. So I can go derp and boom. Oops, maybe I should hold shift here to make a copy. Every other one. And then do the same thing here, except 20 over. So move those up. And now when I play it, and there he goes. He made his turn. And you notice his body dips down comes back up nice and slow. I can have it bounce a little bit more. Now watch what happens when I take my root bone and wipe this animation. Watch the legs. Okay, And they're moving in an arc. So now what I do is that root animation that I wanted I just put in UDK as a linear curve of 90 degrees with a with a linear curve just a straight line linear curve because these are based on a linear curve too so he'll do he'll do the full animation and then he'll be 90 degrees his object will be 90 degrees okay him his, his the the actor placement will be 90 degrees so because I actually it's the only animation that I have a movement track on all my other animations are just gonna play in place and, and no matter what, all his different attacks, all of his idols, anything and everything I do to him is going to be at whatever angle he's at. I could even have, I could probably, except it'll be difficult because it's kind of funny. <laughs> That's funny looking. Uh, this the body animation that I was just showing you that you know it's completely separate entity. I'm I'm not gonna have it do that. I'm gonna have him like bouncing up and down a little bit more and maybe you know like a little bit more turn to the right kind of thing. So I'll, what I'll end up doing is putting him back so I can make sure that it looks good like this because this is what I'm gonna end up with in my final result. So I also got to make sure that I get rid of all of this kind of garbage too, like where the feet are planting on top of themselves and stuff like that. That's Again, a completely non-issue, um, especially if I create eight of these things. I can desync these even better. And like I said, what I like to do is how this leg is going up, and these two are like in an identical unison like that. I don't like that. What I tend to do is lift this one up um, instead of offsetting it by twenty, which would match it. You know, I'm offset. The, the, the rear leg here is offset from this one by 20. It's exactly the same as this one, but it's also offset from this one by 10. I mean by 20. What I'm going to do is offset this one from this one, and basically this one by 10. So that this one will either lift up first or, or just after this. So they kind of go like 1, 2, you know, in a, in a curve. So the legs will almost like make like a roll. So in essence, it's a little bit more millipede in the way that the legs... Each leg is based on a millipede. Each every leg is doing the exact same animation, but they're like one frame delayed from the next one, and it just goes down the line like that. So it's like doing the wave at a at a at, a, at a, uh, an arena, you know. Everybody's doing the exact same thing, but they're all just doing it offset, and it looks like you know you get like a little bit more of a of a fluid looking wavy type pattern, and that's what I want them to do. I don't exactly want them to do like this. I feel that this is mechanical. This is very mechanical looking to me. So I'll clean it up, you know, no biggie. But there's the theory. So then what we do, and I'll just show you, 
I have a selection set for all of my bones. Okay. Now, before I actually do this, let me show you. Actually, I'll show you both ways. Okay, so I use ActorX because FBX can lick my balls. So let's load up, and I got all my sequences here. And I've already got a turn right 90. That was the one that was basically broken, but I just wanted to load up the sequence here. Now I'm going to call this one turn right 90 bad. And I'm going to say that this is going from 1400 to 1560. Okay, I'm going to digest that. All right like the way the spider is going to digest the player. Now I'm going to take the root bone, delete the animation on it so that he's just doing his thing in place, and I'm going to do the same thing except I'm just going to remove the word bad and digest that animation. Oops, I didn't have the bone selected. So let me delete that one. See how great Actor X is? Why they stopped continuing support on this thing blows my mind. Like, really? This was the greatest tool that anybody ever came up with. I mean, it really is. I love it. Inconsistent bone counts detected. I think I did it again. So let me delete that. No? Bones export. Digest animation. Um, these are not hard linked. They are not part of the export set. Inconsistent bone count. Really? I didn't have that problem 10 minutes ago. Okay, let me delete these. Load. Okay, loaded animation bone number 64, inconsistent with digested bone number 66. Okay, so it's saying I have 66 bones digested. Um, I think I might have an animation on here. Some You can actually have a blank animation, by the way. If you get this problem, um, sometimes you have to just reopen Max. You can see I got 64 objects here. So I'll digest the animation. Total frames, turn right 90. It doesn't say how many total bones. Animation manager, turn right 90. Okay, duplicate name selected and then inconsistent bone count. It says my digested bone number is 66. And I do have these two additional objects here, but they're not selected. Only selected. Um, I'm going to save. Okay, I'm going to copy that name for the animation file name. I'm just going to put some garbage in there. Animation manager does not exist yet. So I'm going to delete all these. I'm going to delete that. I'm just going to hit OK. Then I'm going to Animation Manager Load. OK, doesn't exist yet. Let's put the name back in. Animation Manager Load. Why is this saying I have 66 bones? OK, I've got to make sure that these guys are not linked to anything. They might have been still linked. Okay, now it's because I still have something in digestion, I believe. This is the good one, right? Yeah, it's a good one. So, digest animation. Where are those linked to something? Okay, yeah, they were. They, I still had them hard linked. Notice that, now oh, I'm good. So I can save that, okay. Uh, 
let's I'll just put the thing here and undo a couple of hundred times until he spins okay there he is spun and then I'll make sure that these are not linked to anything because apparently if they're linked like with an actual hierarchical link so this is a good uh, thing for you guys to see with a hierarchical link it's going to actually put them into the skeleton uh, actor X will do it even if you don't have them selected even if you have only selected checked okay so now I go back to bones exports this is going to be turn right 90 bad because this is the one that actually animates him turning okay not just the movement of his body but the actual rotation of him I digest that guy and I can plug that in okay so actor X is in a sense smart but it does have a couple of pitfall weirdnesses you can't once you've actually this list here each one of these things actually has data in it and actor X analyzes that data so if you try to pull something in that has the wrong table of data which may, basically means however many bones you have in your track um, it will flag and give you weirdness the same way it says you can't bring over a duplicate name um, it'd be kind of nice if you you could if it came up and said you want to replace instead of saying no you can't do it but that's that's neither here nor there so I'm gonna save this now so I'm pretty confident that I'm okay and I'm keeping the animation on him uh, because I am gonna go back and clean it up to make it look good not not so mechanical but I'm gonna go ahead and close this now and I'll open reopen UDK okay here we are in UDK here's my uh, package I'm gonna hit fully load on this and then find it again because it loves to do that and go to the atom set viewer here Let's zoom out and I'll reimport my PSA transfer boss atoms I'll just say yes to all doesn't ever really matter okay and now let's look at the animations here okay so I got turn right 90 if I play he just does the leg animation okay put that back and now turn right 90 bad he actually spins in place now it looks good right I mean it looks correct but it's not and the reason is is because let's uh, see it moved the whole thing on me again we'll go and grab our skeletal mesh and I will dump him in place okay and just so I can get the feet in the right spot what I'll do no, notice again that it moved my where I was looking um, I'll grab this anim set here and just pull up his properties and plug that in there and then I can drop down animations and say turn right 90 and hit enter and he'll play that and you can see that he's pretty much on the ground let me get him right here pretty much on the ground so that's fine okay now I don't want him to actually be playing it or looping it or anything like that so we'll go into kismet real quick and with him selected we'll make a new matinee we'll come in and let me pull this up a little bit here and we'll say new skeletal mesh group and I'll call this turn right 90 okay now with the group selected and the atom set selected I plug that in here Boop. and then on the animation I can hit enter and pick turn right 90 bad and then what I do here is what I like to do is just move this off make sure that by the way when you do this that you are not snapping and right click and say move to longest track endpoint and now I will just hide that and move this out of the way and you can see that he does the animation okay so so that's cool working all around all right all right now what I'll do is make a dupe do person of this this physics mode is not set to interpolating I don't really give two shits about that but actually I do 
So let's um, make sure that his uh, movement is interpolating. Okay, and it's a good idea to close matinee and reopen it after you've done that. And on this one, I will take this animation and hit enter. Actually, no, I don't want to hit enter. I want to delete it. Click it. Click it and delete it. And then make a new one just so I don't make sure I don't have. And it do turn right 90. The reason I deleted it is because it could very well put the same, put two tracks down at the same time. Okay, so then I do that. And you'll see now that he's not doing his thing. He's skirting around like, whoop, 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 he's slipping on a banana peel. So what I do is go to movement here. And because I've already set my endpoint, I can just hit enter on my track and come here and rotate him to the right 90 degrees, which is negative 90. But you'll see that his feet are slipping on the ground. Okay, slip, 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 slip. Now what I do is come over here and pop the curve for movement and right click and say split translation and rotation. Okay, and then I'm just going to show the Z rotation and I'm going to zoom it into view. Okay, there's a scroll out and I'll just set this to linear. And now when I scrub through, the animation is clean. Okay, his foot is planted. Because the, the, the feet were generated in their path based on that linear linear path. So that's a good a good one. Okay, that's that's a good one. And the other one looks good. It looks good. But let's this was bad, so Let's go ahead and make sure that we say this was bad. Okay, now I'm going to take a new matinee here, open this guy, get rid of this animation track, hit enter, and I'll pick uh, a lunge forward attack. I haven't actually tested that one yet come here and I will right click this and say move to longest track endpoint no movement track or anything like that okay so now what we're gonna do is when we're done with this one we'll play this one and when we're done with this one we'll play this one now each one of these I want them to make sure that they can play again so you gotta make sure that they're rewind on play and I wanna say no reset on rewind rewind on play no reset on rewind Okay, and what I'll do is I'll just dupe this exact same one, use the same animation and everything, so it so it all makes sense. And then same thing, rewind on play, no reset on rewind, and same thing here. Now I'll do a new event level loaded, and we will try our good one first. So he turns in place and then does an animation, bam, slams his feet down, turns in place, does another animation, bam, slams his feet down, turns in place, and the feet are planted good. Okay, you can see that they're planted good. And slam. Now what happens when we play the bad one? turns in place and then snaps that way bam turns in place snaps back see the difference I'm sure you see the difference <laughs> it's pretty obvious what the difference is okay this one don't work and how am I gonna how would I get this to work I would have to say that this, his movement track here, is with him rotated. Right? You would think, oh, well, duh. All you gotta do is rotate him, dude. Okay. So he's rotated 90 degrees. Right? Now we'll play it. 
So everything's good. Oh, but it didn't work. Because you can't do that. You would have to do code to rotate them 90 every time. Technically, I, you could get away with it. You could you could code it so that it, it it fixed itself. Hey, look, I got a floating hair. God damn it! I thought I got all of them, but I don't. I didn't. Um, but the 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 fact is is that why did I open that? That this one does makes it so I don't have to do anything. He'll keep going around in a circle. And don't forget that doing rotation in code, you got to worry about stupid quad. Quaternions, whatever frickin' planet they came from. So there's his butt in my face. Damn. So this one, you'd have to say, okay, well, once this one's done, this one has to play. It's at now it's at 90 degrees. Well, what happens when you want to play this one again? Oh, okay, well then it's back at 90 degrees. And then what if you want to play another one, you know, a different animation? That's the that's the awesome thing here. Instead of looping this, I'll play a completely different animation after it. Let's have him do the jump slam. Same track length because I did them 100 frames. And then we'll loop. So now he's going to turn, do a front, I'm going to die, do a front slam, and then he's going to do a jump slam. Bam. And then jump. And then bam. And then turn. And then do the slam. And then do the jump slam. Bam. Beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did because when I came up with this I was so happy that that's all I had to do. Okay, And he'll keep doing it. And you could easily make a tracker to say, okay, because you know, fighting this guy is supposed to be shoot, shooting his eyes and all that stuff and he's running attacks on me and he won't, he's not going to turn. He's going to keep doing all this stuff. Okay, But if I move to his side to avoid that stuff, he might see it. Now, You'd have to use code to actually have him track your exact angle. So like if I move to the left, he would walk to the left and walk to the right. Because the problem is, is that you'd have to be able to blend him back to idle. You know, and you'd probably even want code to say that if a, if a foot is going to move from its position, that it actually has to raise first so that it doesn't just slide across the ground. Because he'll just slide across the ground, you know. So... There's that. And it's totally outstanding how it's working clean. I mean, good transitions between them. And like I said, and there is absolutely nothing stopping me from having him go the opposite way. Because I think, to be honest with you, uh, <laughs> I could just do negative one. Does he turn to the left? Okay, he's not playing it. Um, do, 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 do. Play rate. I guess maybe you can't go negative one. The multiplier for play rate. How do you get it to go backwards? Four star position, rewind if already playing. Looping? Maybe it's got to be looping. Does it end the animation at the very least? Hmm. Well, I can easily make an animation in Max. But let's see, what about... Is he going to look good if I make him go like much faster when he turns? Okay, notice I kept it looping. His feet look ridiculous. So, yeah, no, that force too fast. Uh, yeah, I gotta kill looping, and I'm thinking maybe two, just twice as fast. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, it doesn't feel bad at all. I could have halved, you know, the amount of frames that I was using to make the animation in general, but it's much easier on a 20 frame, uh, 20, 20 timeline, because 20 is divisible by 4, and just a hint for animators, um, I don't know if this is actually true or not, but for to me it seems like it should be true. Um, if you think about music, uh, music is always on like a, like a 4 beat, like 2, 4, 8 kind of thing. And, I mean, almost all music is. I mean, they deviate. You know, some of them are on five, you know, different different genres and stuff like that. But for the most part, most of them are, like, on four. So if you animate, like, on, on a, something on a frame uh, divisor, I guess, you know, multiplication of four, like, 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 a hundred. That's why, like, doing, like, a... Um, a 50 frame animation is actually kind of difficult. It's much better to do a 40 frame animation because your your halfway points are easier. Because think about 50. Half of 50 is um, 25. Well, what's half of that? Well, that's 12.5, right? 0.5. You don't have frame 0.5. You know, you got frames. Your frames are integers. So keep that in mind. But if you do 40, half of that is 20, half of that is 10, half of that is 5. And it isn't until you try to half that that you start getting into the 0.5s. Uh, same thing with 100. 100 is not necessarily a good frame marker for stuff. I tend to use it anyways because you, I, I tend not to split more than twice, so I usually go 100, 50, and 25. It's pretty rare I go 12 uh, because the thing is, is which, which keyframe do you put that on? Do you put that on 12 or do you put that on 13? Because you don't have 12.5, you got to pick one, you know? So this is HitPause signing off. Hopefully you guys learned something here about... Uh, pretty quick and awesome way to make uh, and, you, and trust me you can use this for human characters too uh, to get them to turn in place uh, you wanna rotate their pivot point 90 degrees on a pretty linear curve because remember a player controller a player himself is on a linear curve okay even though it's jittery when I move you know too fast or whatnot uh, you wanna make sure that you do uh, you know, animate his however his feet are going to move based on him turning 90 degrees linearly so that you, you can easily get the feet to track. And you could do exactly what I did. You could use those, uh, just, just use some marker bars or, or squares or circles or whatever you want and just have those be what controls the position of the feet and you won't have any problems. Just like this, which is even more difficult than a human because it's got eight legs, you know? So, all right, Hippos signing off, and I hope you enjoyed it.